This video is about the causality illusion. You know when cats get their heads stuck in buckets and things like that and they don't know what's going on? Well, the causality illusion is like the human version of that, where there's the distortion of our perceptions. And this video is trying to take the bucket off your cat face. An example of the causality illusion is this online subculture that believes drinking a glass of your own urine is a miracle health cure that makes you fit and healthy and more confident. And perhaps it does work, but not for the reason they think it does. Like I know that if I started each day by drinking a glass of my own urine, everything else from that point would seem really easy. All of a sudden after drinking my own urine, it doesn't seem so hard asking my boss for a pay rise. Wow, this urine has magical health properties. That would be an example of the causality illusion, confusing things that happen at the same time as causing each other. Well, just because they correlate, aka happening at the same time, doesn't mean they're actually causing each other, and sometimes there's another cause for those phenomena. And the reason there's the scientific method and they do experiments to try to identify the actual causes. But our brains tend to make these causality illusions where we assume that because X thing is happening at the same time, it must be causing that. And this is what this video is about. This affects things like politics, economics, medicine, including your personal life. This video will be using jokes in order to highlight the causal illusion. The causality illusion can often make us make mistakes when trying to understand our personal lives. For example, I used to get into a lot of fights and arguments with people in Brisbane and think, oh, people in Brisbane are such assholes, such jerks. So I moved to another city 4,000 kilometers away and I found that I also go into arguments and fights with people in Perth. And then I was like, oh, oh, it's a me thing. Oh, I understand now. I understand, I'm the asshole. Ah. But you see how changing the variables, that the variable I thought was important was being in Brisbane. And I thought that was causing me to get into fights, but then I changed that variable. And then I, the only variable I had left was me. That was the consistent thing. So obviously it's me that's the asshole. Science. The causality illusion often happens when we think that things that happen at the same time are causing each other. You have probably heard people say correlation doesn't equal causality. This is what this video is about. The causality illusion will often lead people to make errors in judgments when trying to determine what are causing medical problems. For example, there was a case of three business owners of a logistics company that ended up getting brain cancers around the same time. And these were guys who used their mobile phones for eight hours a day for years. And people will point to that and go, you see, mobile phones are causing brain cancer. It must be the radio waves affecting the brain tissue. Well, it correlates with the brain cancer, but we don't know if it necessarily caused it. There could be another thing that's caused it. For example, boring conversations. Having boring conversations eight hours a day might be causing the brain cancers. We don't know. The causality illusion also affects political matters. For example, political correctness. There's a high correlation between people who use the F word that rhymes with baguette with people who hate gay people. And this provides the moral justification for censorship of that word. That's why I can't use that word that rhymes with baguette on an online video because this video would be taken down. But correlation doesn't cause causality. That word that rhymes with baguette isn't necessarily always a sign of homophobia or contributing to homophobia in society because there's times where you can use that word that rhymes with baguette in a way that's actually loving and supportive of gay people. For example, when you're having sex with your boyfriend and you say, take it baguette, okay, that's loving and supportive. Con artists and charlatans often exploit the causality illusion in order to sell dubious products that make sensational claims. For example, me and my partner were down in Nimbin, uh, an area of Australia which is known for new age spirituality and alternative medicines. And we were in the shop that had a bunch of crystals and uh, different kinds of glass bongs, which there seems to be a high correlation between lots of crystals and glass bongs. But what was interesting about this shop is there was a sexual lubricant that claimed to have special aphrodisiacs 
that would arouse you and your partner. Now, what's going to be a likely cause? You and your partner in the mood for sex, rubbing this lube on each other's genitals? Would that be more of a factor for arousing each other? Or would it be these magical herbs that was claimed to be put in the sexual lubricant in the hippie shop next to the bongs? What, what's going to be a greater factor? Like imagine believing that, going, oh, honey, it's so weird when you present your ass to me and I rub lube all over it. It seems to be working. I, I get really aroused. This, this lube must be working. This is incredible. This is amazing. We need to spend hundreds of dollars on this lube. Another example of the causality illusion would be bloodletting. So for years and years, and even in some parts of the world today, they still do bloodletting as a treatment for basically any ailment. Because what used to happen is patients would come in and they would be manic or maybe schizophrenic and they're crazy, acting crazy. The practitioner would drain that person of blood until they've no longer got the energy to display their symptoms of being crazy. And then the practitioner will go, look, you see, they've been cured. And it took a long time for people to realize what was going on. And one of the things that make the causality illusion very strong is when people have a personal investment in the narrative that it's having X effect. So these doctors in the 1800s that were bloodletting people would have had the other generations underneath them challenging them going, oh yeah, I'm not actually sure that that does what you think it does. And what are they going to do? Are they going to admit to themselves that maybe for 30 years they weren't the healer that they thought they were and they were actually hurting people? Or would they just go, oh, well, they're just jealous. These people, they haven't worked as hard as me. They're just jealous. Um, and in fact, in order to cure them from their jealousy, I recommend they get bloodletting. Another way that this affects medical issues is Reiki healing. So Reiki healing is this idea that people hold their hands kind of near you in proximity and give you a lot of attention and they're using magical energies of the hands to heal you. Now, before we begin the Reiki healing session, I want you to think about something, some area of your life that you would like to receive some energy from, okay? Now, Reiki energy is life force energy, and that is what we are made of. Now, I was also in Nimbin many years ago, and the first time I ever had cannabis, I ate three hash cookies, and I was completely off my chops. I was like singing and delusional for like six hours, and then I eventually ended up vomiting and shitting, and I was very sick. And this woman, this young woman came over and started raking healing me and I started feeling better. Now what's going on here? Does she have magical energies or was it the fact that she was a young, attractive woman with a very tight crop top around her rather large breasts and she was focusing in on me, you know, well, what's going on here? Because is it the Reiki healing or is it that voluptuous breasts hanging off of young, attractive women? correlates with me feeling better what what's causing what here like titties and female attention has a high correlation with young male happiness and feeling better okay and you just want to release the thoughts you just want to allow yourself to embrace in the healing so I in the last decade or so there's been an increase in the amount of anti-vacciners people who believe vaccines are harmful and they cause autism in children one of the reasons this might be happening is because there's a correlation between vaccines and autistic children because at the same age that you get a lot of vaccines around two that's the same time children start to show their symptoms of autism and so people might be observing this and attributing it to the vaccine which seems a lot easier to blame big pharmaceutical companies for making your child autistic rather than saying me and my partner have shitty genes and that's why we have a child with a disability. An additional factor with the anti-vaccine conspiracy is this political heuristic or belief people have of always question authority. Don't trust authority. You need to question authority. And you know, that makes sense because a lot of the times the authorities make mistakes or are corrupt but 
they forget this other idea, which is also really useful, which is to question the non-authorities. For example, that guy with dreadlocks and a crystal around his neck, you should probably question him when he's giving you medical advice for your children. One of the best ways to prevent the causality illusion is through the scientific method. Science comes from the word scientia, which is Latin for how do we know? So an interesting case study in the causality illusion, again, it comes to something that affects autistic children. There was this popular craze called facilitated communication that claimed to be a way for parents to communicate with their autistic child because some people with severe autism are nonverbal. And basically what facilitated communication was is an adult grabbing the autistic child's hand and pushing it onto a keyboard, typing out letters and writing nice messages to the parents that the parents probably wanted to hear. They had chosen to overlook a number of things about FC that simply didn't make sense. Skeptics wondered how thousands of... Um, like, I love you, mom and dad, you know? And the parents would have been like, oh, wow, I have to feel goods. Finally, I can talk to my autistic child. Um, but what scientists did is they investigated it. So they created an experiment where they showed one picture to the autistic child and then another to the practitioner of facilitated communication, uh, but it was a different picture. And the practitioner didn't know that there were different um, pictures. And then they, they asked the autistic child to ex, uh, describe the picture and the facilitator communicator would describe the picture they've seen, thus indicating that it's the practitioner moving their hands. But how exploitative are these practitioners and delusional? Did they delude themselves or were they just trying to exploit autistic parents? Because autistic kids probably wouldn't have liked to have been touched. So the facilitator would have probably had questions from the parents going, oh, is our child okay? They, they seem to be distressed. And no, mommy and daddy, I love the facilitator. It is so awesome. <laughs> and you should keep paying them money. Another example of the causality illusion is a, a drug called Cambo, which is the secretions of a poisonous South American frog that new age healing practitioners apply to people um, with the idea that it purges them and it, it heals them and basically what happens is people become very sick for about half an hour they ended up vomiting or shitting sometimes it's longer and they end up in hospital or dead but I'll get to that and a friend of mine in Sydney he did this practice and I was like oh how was it and why'd you do it he was like oh well I wanted to quit smoking marijuana so I decided some frog poison might be a good idea. And he did it and he described his experiences. Remember the personal investment thing? So he was saying, oh, you know, I ended up vomiting and, and it, 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 I swear it was bong water that was coming out. It was, it was bong water. And um, I don't know how it would have been bong water unless he drank a bunch of bong water and then vomited it up. But um, regardless, I was like, oh, cool. So did... You, you haven't been using cannabis since then and it's like yeah yeah it's worked it's worked i haven't yeah yeah well uh, you know a few joints here and there but yeah mainly it's been pretty good you know so it hasn't even worked but i think what happens because a lot of people do it this cambo they claim to feel uh really relieved and 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 better after they do it but they might be confusing simply feeling very sick from frog poison with feeling uh, better. For example, if you feel really crappy and then all of a sudden you feel good, you'll be like, oh, see, I'm feeling better. It's just in contrast of how bad they felt. That could be what's actually going on rather than Cambo having any healing ability. So I think that's might be what's happening with this Cambo thing. And one woman actually died in Mullumbimby near that Nimbin area I was talking about, which has a lot of new age kind of thinkers and she died because she gave herself a lot of this frog poison and on the websites that talks about the benefits of cambo they go oh it's a muscle relaxant it it helps relax the muscles well evidently what happened is this cambo also relaxes your hearts your heart and lungs and this woman was so relaxed 
from the cambo that her heart and lungs shut down and she died from cardiac arrest. And I've got a friend of mine who is a cambo practitioner. He's a really smart guy and intelligence isn't necessarily a thing that's going to prevent you from the causality illusion. And he keeps offering to give me this cambo stuff, which is nice of him. And I don't want to be mean to him on the phone because he's trying to be nice to me. I don't want to go, yeah, dude, you're fucking crazy. <laughs> Fuck you. So I have to kind of go, oh, cool, man. I'll think about it. Like, why can't I, why do I have to look after his feelings? Why can't I be like, oh, hey, man. Um, yeah, that's nice. Hey, um, if you ever want to do some science, man, I could teach you some science. Yeah, it's really good f for anything. It's like a really good thing to have. But the causality illusion isn't just with the external things like I was discussing with the Cambo. It can be internal feelings that um, correlate with something that we think are caused by one event. Um, and we can get those confused. So there's one famous study where they have people walk across a rickety bridge up high. They have a woman stand in the middle of that bridge. And then they have a more stable bridge close to the ground and a woman stand in the middle of that bridge. And then they ask the different groups to write how attractive that woman was. And the group on the rickety bridge say that the woman was more attractive because when you're up, in high, up at heights on a rickety bridge, you feel anxious. And you feel anxious when you're attracted to someone. So they're misattributing those feelings of anxiousness to be, of, to be attracted to this woman. So that means that the next time you're out on a coffee date and you go order a coffee, for your date you should be like yeah can you put eight shots in that coffee please that way your date drinks the coffee and all of a sudden the caffeine makes her heart race and she feels anxious and she's like oh my god this is incredible i haven't felt this way about anyone in ages and i need to shit myself this is incredible this must be true love another example of the causality illusion could be trigger warnings so here's a video of a far left-wing activist defending the legitimacy of trigger warnings. I've noticed people saying things like, this triggered me, as a kind of anti-feminist joke. The problem is that it's showing a lack of empathy for the situation of a trauma survivor. You might see someone else's trauma trigger as being something completely harmless. Now don't get me wrong, I believe that trigger warnings is sometimes useful when people have experienced trauma. I, for example, would like to have a trigger warning when someone is about to mention trigger warnings because I get triggered because I remember all the kind of goofy, simplistic, unrigorous, dogmatic, superstitious, goofy ideas that exist in the radical left wing and it reminds me of that and I get very triggered. Now the possible dangers of trigger warnings and why the causality illusion might affect it is there's a thing called priming so this is the psychological principle that underpins placebos you tell people that this pill will make them feel better they take the pill they sometimes feel better because they've been primed to expect that similarly there's a thing called nocebos which you tell them that that pill is going to have a negative effect and then they experience negative feelings afterwards so trigger warnings could be an example of when you're priming someone to experience something negative you're nocebowing people about information there's one possible danger but ideologues and idealistic people like the the man in that video they only see things in its best possible case oh redistributing wealth oh i can only see it in the best possible way it must be good all the time if you're against it you're against my good intentions thus you have bad intentions you bad man you bad man hey thanks for watching uh there's a link to a scientific literature review on causality illusion, which is very interesting. And next Sunday, not this Sunday, the one after, on the 30th of June, I'll be doing a live stream, stream about the uh, illusion of knowledge, um, cognitive bias, as well as some stories um, from when I used to be in the cult, um, which I mean when I was a far left wing activist. Uh, please like my page and share my videos and all that kind of stuff and your you doing that correlates with my hat.